Hi folks, today we're gonna speak about speeding up your Raspberry Pi 5 with a number of SSD drives and AI cards. In my previous video, I pointed out the importance of PCIe switch. Without it, you are only able to use one PCIe device, but you wanna have more, at least one SSD drive and one AI card if you wanna do AI accelerated applications, for example, training neural networks. You wanna make a disk array, then you also need a number of drives relying on SD cards and USB adapters and USB drives may not be a good option. It's surely not a fast option and if you compare them to SSD drive connected through a PCIe bus, the later are a number of files faster. But today we have a number of solutions that utilize the power of PCIe switch. I want to show you this wonderful Raspberry Pi 5 expansion hats. The first with two M.2 PCIe slots and the second one with even four M.2 PCIe slots, which is more than most laptops can do. They're made by 52Pi, but you can also use solutions from other makers with similar capabilities. The larger hat with four PCIe M.2 slots also comes with an instruction booklet where it is clearly indicated that it is recommendable to set your configuration TXT file to communicate with the hat through PCIe Gen 3 standard, which supports 10 gigabit transactions per second instead of 5 as Gen 2 standard. And this is really amazing because I believe that 52Pi made this board well well adapted to Raspberry Pi 5. And despite that Raspberry Pi does not recommend the use of Gen 3, PCIe standard, they are confident enough to suggest it for your applications. However, this could not be achieved without a very precise voltage regulation. The larger Quad NVMe expansion board for Raspberry Pi 5 hat has an inbuilt voltage regulator, not only for itself but also for Raspberry Pi 5. Raspberry Pi 5 is therefore powered through the board with a very short power cable with two USB-C male connectors. However, on the other side there is a power in connector where you can plug a power delivery capable power supply that supports the maximum voltage of at least 9 volts up to 20 volts. However, the input voltage should never exceed 20 volts. Therefore, you can also use the original Raspberry Pi 5 27 watt power supply. However, if you are using an inappropriate power supply without power delivery capabilities that can only provide 5 volts, you would have an under voltage and you would not be able to power your Raspberry Pi 5. The only solution to this problem is to buy an appropriate power delivery capable power supply. So much about the larger 52Pi N16 board with AS Media 1184E chip. Now let's continue with a smaller N21 board which only supports two M.2 slots. It is based on AS Media 82E chip. Though it does not require a PD capable power supply, it still requires enough amperage to be able to power Raspberry Pi and any cards that you plug in into M.2 slots. It gets power directly from from Raspberry Pi 5's PCB points when the board is firmly attached to the bottom side of the Raspberry Pi printed circuit board. So the board is connected in two steps. First you connect PCIe cable to both of the connectors on both the boards and then you place your extension board underneath Raspberry Pi 5 and screw both printed circuit boards together. A major advantage of this smaller PCIe switch board is that you don't actually need a PD capable power supply but you can use any kind of 5 volt, 5 ampere or more capable power supply to power both your Raspberry Pi 5 and the extension board underneath. In the last part of this video we're gonna talk about how to incorporate a PCIe switch board into your existing Raspberry Pi. I've been intensively using my Raspberry Pi 5 desktop configuration with numerous add-ons for almost a year now. Inbuilding N16 board therefore was not an easy task. Internal components had to be rearranged to make more room for the new board. But still there was not enough height to enable placing the new N16 board underneath my Raspberry Pi 5. It had to be mounted sideways and power supply had to be arranged accordingly. 
there is a number of technical details that should have been discussed if you wanted to do it yourself. So maybe we'll discuss them in one of the next videos. And we'll also discuss the performance of N16 and N21 board that we'll use to install different operating systems. For example, Windows 11 H24. And we'll compare the performance with the performance that you can get by using SD cards. Windows may also be used to build disk arrays, which is also an interesting topic. If you've liked this video, please press like and subscribe buttons. The next video is coming soon. Bye.